so the three types of bonds are covalent, ionic, and metallic. Um, basically, for, uh, the basics you need to know is that covalent is, is uh, well, let, let's make a note here. So, so covalent, it involves uh, sharing, sharing electrons. And usually, uh, oh, I think maybe always actually, no, sorry, it's, it's going to be always, I think it's going to be two uh, between uh, two non-metals. I'm going to put NM. Can I make that any thinner? I can't. Um, so between two non-metals <coughs> for covalent. Ionic is... Um, making ions obviously so um, giving receiving electrons so ions um, it's going to be losing gaining electrons um, and it's it's usually this one is usually so because there are exceptions in this case usually metal and non-metal oops but there are exceptions to that one okay so usually. And then the third one, which was over the page slightly irritatingly. So the third one is um, metal and metal. So um, so the first so the first one was um, sharing electrons. And it's between two non-metals. The second one was um, giving and receiving ele um, electrons, so making positive and negative ions, and then you'd be attracted that way. Um, so, what? How? How do metal bonds work? Because metals form positive ions, but then they would be they they wouldn't be attracted to each other. And what's more, where are they going to give the electrons to if the if there's just going to be other metals, they won't want to receive the electrons because metals like to lose electrons. So, so first of all, we've got, it, let's say we had a block of, um, of, of sodium. So let's say we've got this, we're going to say, whenever I've drawn Na, we can say that's the sodium, well, yeah, block of sodium, it's going to lose its electron. And then a little bit later on, there's another sodium ion, which has lost its electron. And a little bit later on, there's another sodium ion. Yeah, um, in the case of in the case of this one, it loses one electron because it's in group one. So um, if it has one electron, if a metal has one electron in the outer shell, that's how many it will lose. So let's just shrink this down because I've zoomed in too closely. I can't. Would you, would you lose um, have seven of them lose them? So it has to be. Uh, nope, that's not what happens either. <laughs> Basically, you have this situation. So I'm gonna, we're going to just kind of keep shrinking this down. So let's just put another four there. All right. So we're making this is we've talked about ionic lattices. This is going to be a metal lattice. But we're gonna. But so far, I haven't haven't shown where the electron has gone yet, have I? Yeah, there's loads of electrons missing. There must be loads of electrons missing, right? Yeah, in fact, yeah, exactly that many, because there's 20 ions in this. So there's going to be each one's lost an electron. There's going to be 20 electrons. So um, where are they all? Well, basically, let's just draw an electron. We're going to say that's an electron, um, and we'll make it. Let's make it. Let's make it um, blue. Oops. Make it blue, and. And we'll, uh, yeah, let's shrink it down. Oh, it won't let me shrink it. Fine, it's just going to be a massive electron then. Um, so I won't be able to do 20 of them. Well, I might be able to if I copy them, maybe. Uh, well, I think it's going to be a bit tricky, perhaps. Let's see. Nah, <laughs> you get the idea. Okay, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to scratch that. I'm just going to make little crosses instead. So, um, so you get all these electrons. Basically, what 
in metals, in, in met metallic bonding, you have these electrons and they just kind of, they just, they just kind of flow everywhere. So inside of a metal, and they actually go slightly above the surface of, of the metal as well. So they're not, so they're there, but they're not attached to one particular. They actually, um, it, it's right. more than they just hop from one to the other. They actually just flow like a sea of electrons. The entire lattice is positively charged and the, and the charge is so evenly spread that they, they don't even, you know, they don't even snap from one to the other, they just flow across them so the the electrons in apart from the plum pudding model was of an atom whereas this is of a chunk of metal many different atoms yeah the other the, the, the other thing about the plum pudding metal model was that um that was they were embedded within the atom and and the electrons were embedded within the atom whereas now it's it's just not it, it's it's able to flow around so the electrons in a metal kind of behave like a like a gas actually so and, and that's and that's by the way, and we were talking about this earlier on about the characteristics of, of metals. Metals conduct heat really well. That's because these electrons carry a lot of the energy from one place to another. So if I heated up this one side of the of the metal block, um, let's use a little arrow here, the standard standard symbol for heat, what would happen is that while the the, the lattice the um sodium ions would get would get gain energy so the electrons and the energy the the energy carried by the electrons would would um, spread around the metal a lot faster because the electrons are able to move around more freely so uh, so heat so um it, in a way um conduction in in metals is more similar to um convection um if you if you think if you only think of the actual electrons so conduction in metals happens really, really quickly. And then you've got electricity. How, what about conducting electricity? Well, remember these electrons are negatively charged. So if I apply a, a positive charge um, on one end, it's going to attract all those electrons to it and they're able to freely move within the uh, uh, metal. So, so metals conduct electricity because of the free electrons and they also conduct heat because of the free electrons. And they have these free electrons because they have a small number of electrons in the outer shell. So that's the final, um, that's the third type of bond, uh, metal, metallic bonding.